with me? Everyone, we, we used to listen to that song going to Chick fil A every morning. Sing with that song. That we are champions for the day. Yeah. Amen. You have to be, wake up with that mindset that you're going to be a champion on this day. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, we just thank you. God, we thank you. We give you praise and we give you honor and we give you glory for this day, oh God. God, because this is truly the day that you have made, oh God, and we shall rejoice and be glad about it, oh God. Father God, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for raising us up this morning to yet to see another day to give you glory, honor, and praise, oh God. God, you didn't have to do it, Lord Jesus, but oh my God, my God, I am so glad you did, oh God. I'm glad you gave us another opportunity, oh God, to stand in your presence, oh God. Hallelujah, and give you glory for what you've done in our lives and what you're about to do yes. in and through us, oh God. Yes. Now, God, I ask you, oh God, that I may decrease, oh God, so that you can increase yes. in our lives. Have your way, oh God, through this word, oh God. Have your way in me right now in the name of Jesus. Oh God, I ask you to divide this word, oh God. Yes. Divide it right now in the name of Jesus to meet your people to where they are in the name of Jesus. Oh God, change hearts, change minds, yes. deliver, set free in the name of Jesus, oh God. Yes, God. Pour out your anointing upon your people in the name yes, of God. Jesus. God, don't let them leave this place, oh God, the same way that they came in, oh God. Yes, God, hide me, Lord Jesus. Hide me right now in the name of Jesus behind your own rugged cross, oh God. Hallelujah. Let nobody, let no man, no woman, boy, or girl, See me, oh God, but let them see you. Let them see your spirit. Let them see your power. Let them experience your glory on today, oh God. Your people need to see your glory on today, right now, in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we just want you to just bless this word, oh God. God, I know and I trust you in the name of Jesus yes, that this word, God, is going to accomplish that which you have yes, sent it to do, oh God. Because, God, I know you're not a man that you should lie, oh God. And, God, you wouldn't put me out here, oh God, just to leave me, Lord Jesus. But, God, right now, in the name of Jesus, do what you will. Yes. Have your way in the name of Jesus. And, God, I thank you. And I give you praise. And I give you honor. And I give you glory. It's in Jesus' mighty name that we pray. Let everybody give God a praise in the house. Give him a praise in the house. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't worry about who it is up here. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Y'all know I've been struggling with this word for, let me turn me down just a little bit. You know I'm kind of loud. Amen. Uh, I guess about six months or so. Hallelujah. Isn't it strange? It's not strange that sometimes God will, will let you experience a thing before he actually lets you bring it to pass, before he bring it to pass. So I've experienced this word, amen? And I was struggling with it all last night. I, I, I wanted to change the message. I wanted to change the word. But around 6 o'clock, you know, I was tossing and turning all night. Y'all know how we do. We don't want to do what God tells us to do. We want to do what we want to do and, and make it be easy and palatable. Not only to us, but palatable to the people. Amen. Yes, and, you know, God woke me up about 6 o'clock. He said, you will do this. You will give this message. You will do what I have called you to do. No matter what people may say, no matter how they may look, no matter what they may do, I have called you to be a champion. I have called you for such a time as this. It don't matter. God say it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter about their faces. It doesn't matter what they may say. And it doesn't matter for what they do. But for the purpose of the slide, I'm going to read the scripture, but God changed my scripture. Praise Jesus. But for the purpose of being purposeful, so both of, we're going to do, we're going to read this scripture. And it, it, it all ties, it all ties in. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lord Jesus. Come on. Anyway. <sighs> Y'all just don't know. Y'all just don't know. Y'all don't know. You just don't know. But I'm here today. I'm going to tell you about it. Luke 9. Luke 9. And open your hearts 
and open your minds to receive what does say the Lord. Not what I say. I'm nobody. I don't have nothing for you, but God does. Mm -hmm. That's your name. I'm going to read it. Luke 9, beginning at verse 57. Hallelujah. If y'all know what's up to me, I'll be rolling right about now. I'll be running down the street, down West Avenue, telling of the goodness of God and, and how he's brought me through and how he saved and delivered and set me, set me free. Mm -hmm. Amen. Luke 9. 57. It's so quiet. Praise Jesus. And the word of God says, And it came to pass that as they went in the way, as they went in the way, go in the way, a certain man said unto him, Lord, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. How many of us said that? And Jesus said unto him, Foxes have holes, and birds have of the and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man have not have not no not where to lay his head. That doesn't seem grammatically correct. <laughs> but this King James. Amen. Praise Jesus. And he said unto another, Follow me. But he said, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. Mm -hmm. Jesus said unto him, let the dead bury their dead. Mm -hmm. But go thee and preach the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. And another said, also said, Lord, I will follow thee, but let me first go and bid them farewell, which are at home at my house. And the Lord said unto him, no man. Mm -hmm. Look at your neighbor and say, no man. No man. Woman, boy, girl, or child. No man. no man. Have put his hands to the plow and look it back. It's fit for the kingdom of God. No man. No man. And if I can, now you know when I first started out, I had about three, four titles. Praise Jesus it says, you know, one of them was what's in your heart, mm -hmm. good treasures or evil. It's a matter of the heart. But I finally come down to it, it says, get your heart in the game. Mm -hmm. Get your heart in the game. And you know, when I started out, you know, me, myself, I wanted to give you all the particulars of the heart and how it has all these different chambers and two chambers and how it's covered by the myochondria and, and how it's, it's covered by, you know, all this different stuff. I, I wanted to give you a, a, a anatomy and physiology lesson, amen, so to speak. But God, this morning by 6 o'clock, that ain't what I told you to do. Mm. That ain't what I told so he took me over to Isaiah 26 and 3. He says, Thou hast kept, thou will keep thee in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusts in thee. And then he talked to me about David, and we know the story of David, and we know David was, they called him a man after God's own heart. So we can find that over in Acts 13 and 22, and it says, And when he had removed him, he raised up unto him, up unto them David, to be their king, to whom also he gave their testimony, remember that, testimony, and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, which shall fulfill all my will. That's Acts 13 and 22. This man, David, was a man after God's own heart, and he was going to fulfill the will of the Father. Now, we all know all the bad stories about David. He was a 
adulterer, he was a murderer, and, uh -huh. and he did all kinds of things. Okay. But yet and still, God called him a man after his own heart. So it doesn't matter what you do in life. You can still be men and women after God's own heart. Mm -hmm. And he called David a man after God's own heart because David was humble. So if you read his, his, the Psalms, you know David wrote most of the Psalms. So if you read the Psalms over in Psalms 18 and 3, you find how humble David was. David was reverent unto the Spirit of God. You can find that over also in Psalms 18 and 3. And he was devoted. Regardless, don't worry about what he did. Don't look at his life. Don't look at what Because that's one thing about God. God does not look on the flesh as man does. But he looks on the heart. So all of this was in David's heart. Even though, you know, men may see him doing all kinds of things that may, they assume that was going against the will of God, and some things were. But yet he was humble. He reverenced God. He was devoted to the things of God. He trusted God to do just exactly what he said he was going to do. If God told David you're going to win the battle, he trusts God that God said it, and it's going to come to pass. How many of us can trust God like that? Amen. That whatever God says, all this red writing in this book, it shall come to pass. Yeah. David loved God. He loved God with an unconditional love. You can find it over Psalms 18 and 1. So read of the Psalm. David was faithful. faithful. Over in Psalms, the 23rd Psalms in verse number 6, he said goodness and mercy was going to follow him. All the days of his life. God told that goodness and mercy was going to follow him all the days of his life. And he was going to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. He was faithful. It didn't matter what came up against him. That he was going to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Don't matter. Don't matter what's going on in his house. He was going to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now, now, you have to understand that this is not the house of the Lord. This is where the house is, us. We house the spirit of the Lord. This is where the houses of the Lord come in to congregate, come to come together and be on one accord to lift up the name of Jesus. Don't get it twisted now. This is not yes. the house of the Lord, but this is where the houses House. huh, of the Lord comes together to congregate. Amen? Amen? To lift up the name of Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Come on and give God a hand clap of praise in the house. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you so much. That was awesome for me. That was so good for me. As a matter of fact, I don't even want that praise. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory. Because I'm a champion. I know who I be. I know who I be. Now come on and give God a hand clap of praise in the house because of who he is to you. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. But in order for us to stay in the game, as the topic says, keep your heart in the game. But in order for us to stay and to win in this Christian, in this Christian walk, we have to have the heart of God. We have to have our, our heart on the things of God and the will of God, regardless of the outcome. Regardless. Over in, in Romans 8 and 28, the Bible tells us that, and I know that all things work together for the good to them that love God, oh. to them who are called according to his purpose. Mm -hmm. I know I've got some called people in the house on today. Mm -hmm. And you're called to his purpose. Mm -hmm. So, so many times we want to do our own purpose. Mm -hmm. We want to sidestep the purpose of God. Yeah. And we not continue looking to the author and the finisher of our faith. Don't you know God has already figured you out? He, when he born, when you was born, when you was yet in your mother's womb, God has already predestinated mm -hmm what you was going to do. Mm -hmm. He already knew that you were going to be here on today. He already knew mm -hmm. what you was about to do. Oh, yeah. 
even before you even knew you was going to. Mm -hmm. Amen. So we have to continue in this walk, regardless of the situation, because everything is going to work out for our good. Yes. Let me tell you guys a story about this young lady that she thought was she was going he was going to destroy her. Now, this young lady, she wasn't a perfect person. Mm -hmm. She made errors, she made mistakes, she may have said some things, she may have done some things that according to men may have been off kilter, off side, and wasn't holy. Praise mm -hmm. Jesus. But just as this young lady was, she loved the Lord. Yes, and yes, God yes. saw her heart. Yes. People saw the flesh. Yes. People saw the flesh. The word of God said, who knows the heart? No man knows it. But God searches it yes. to reveal it unto him so he can re reward us according to what's in our hearts. Mm -hmm. That's what God said. So as this young lady was going through and sharing her story, and God God had to move mightily. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and she, she worked, she had, she shared that she had worked a certain job for a number of years, for a number of years, and, you know, and, and everybody would go to her because they knew that they could count on her. Uh -huh. They knew that they could depend on her, uh -huh. you know, and, and she found favor in God, and, and whether, when she found favor in God, God allowed her to find favor in man, and there was nothing on her, on her natural job that she could not ask for that the people wouldn't give. Amen? And then folks in around the workplace would ask her, how'd you do that? Hey, nothing but the grace of God. I got, you got favor. Uh -huh. yes, yes. You got favor. favor. And when you get favor with God, God would in turn give you favor with people. And there's nothing that nobody can turn down from you because you're walking in the favor of God. Somebody That's say right. favor ain't Amen. fair. Amen. Favor Amen. is not fair. Right. Well, as time went on, it was time for a career change. It was time for a transition or it was time for another transformational shift. Yeah. It was time for her to go through a shift in her life. And this caused some stretching. How many of you know that whenever you go through a shift and whenever there's a transformation, there has to be a stretching mm -hmm. in your life? Mm -hmm. Which wasn't, it's, it's not always, always bad. She handled the shift, mm -hmm. the first shift. And you know, when we go into first gear, it's good. Mm -hmm. We got it. When you go to first gear, it's good. You're shifting. It's good. It wasn't, it wasn't all that bad. It was good. Trust in God. Say, okay, God, I can handle this. And if this is it, this is it. But how many of you know that if there's going to be a shifting or a stretching in your life, mm -hmm. there has it has to be a, a shifting and stretching in your life. And if there's none, God can't, you can't make room for the new things that God has for you. So you have to be stretched and you have to be shifted so God can pour into you for what you got because sometimes we get comfortable in where we are but, but God needs to do some stretching in our lives so he can pour into us what he has for us. All right. Amen. Don't get comfortable where you are. All right. There's going to be a shifting. There's going to be a stretching yes. in our lives because our God is bigger than what we can imagine. Amen. He can dream bigger than what we can dream. He can take us to higher heights and deeper depths that we can even that we, our little minds cannot fathom. So we have to trust God. So she continued to press, and God continued to, to bring these changes about it, continued to stretch and, and stretch and stretch. Two, three stretches ain't that bad. But when it comes down to the fourth stretch, hallelujah. Oh, bless his name. It starts to get a little bit uncomfortable. Yes. It starts to get a, a, uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And she started wondering, okay, God, where is my grace and mercy? Mm -hmm. 
Where is my grace and mercy? Because all this stretching and all this shifting and all this transitioning, it's starting to be uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. It's starting to hurt a little bit. But over in 2 Timothy 2 and 3, it says, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. Read on down. No man that would entangle himself with the affairs of this life, mm -hmm. <coughs> but he may please him who have chosen him to be a soldier. Uh -huh. yeah. mm -hmm. Don't worry about it. God has chosen us to be soldiers. <laughs> Don't worry about the hardness. And if any man also strives for mastery, mm -hmm. if you strive to be better than you are, if you strive to go to higher height and deeper depth, you're going to have to endure as a good soldier. Yet is he not crowned, except he strive lawfully. Go through as a good soldier. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about hardness, because if you stand and do all that you know how to stand, in due season you shall reap that reward that God has for you. The problem with saints today, oh bless his name, we oh. give up too quick. Mm. We give up too quickly. Now this young lady, she wanted to quit. Because by the time that fourth shifting came, hey, she was ready to resort back to some old ways that she used to do. Yeah. She was ready to dig down, like Pastor talked about last week, dig down into that permafrost and dig up some things that she used to do. She was ready to dig up some, some, some mean and hateful ways. Oh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, bless his name. But God, but God, but God, but God, the final shifting, I said she had purposed in her heart, she wasn't going to do this no more. Uh, she didn't see no grace, she didn't see no mercy, she didn't see nothing, she didn't see no God, nothing, and nothing that was going on, God, I don't see you in nothing, I don't see you in this, I don't see you, God. I don't see you. She was saying, she don't see it in nowhere. And nothing that's going on in her life right now. But where, 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 where is her grace and mercy? There? She started looking, she started focusing upon the circumstances of life. She started looking at the situation that was surrounding her and it threw her off her game. Mm -hmm. How many of you know when you, when you start focusing on things around, it throws you off your game? It changes your, your, your purpose. It, it changes your, your concept of life. It, it changes everything around you. It changes your family structure. Hallelujah. When you, when you lose your focus. The heart wasn't in the game. Not like it was before. When things started, it was nothing. Bless you, Jesus. It was nothing when things were started. But then things changed, start, started happening, and, and things was going around. It started taking hold, taking hold, taking grips of her, mm -hmm. losing her focus, and it threw her off a game. You see, sometimes you have to keep your heart in your game. You have to keep your heart in the game. And the way you keep your heart in your game, when situation and things is coming upon, you have to die. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have to die to self. You have to die to flesh. flesh. So the word of God said, bring this flesh upon the subjection every day. Not just every once in a while. Mm. Not just when things become uncomfortable. But if you keep this flesh under subjection every single day of our lives, children of God, we will be able to endure hardness as a good soldier. Even though we get thrown off our game sometimes, we have to bring this flesh up under subjection. So we have to die to ourselves. That means we have to crucify this flesh in order for God to be glorified. Come on, God knows this sister wanted this flesh to be pleased. I mean, you know, the flesh is a mess and it always on, wants Jesus. to be pleased. Jesus. But we have to die to self. See, she didn't understand when God told her, you have to die. Like, <laughs> what? Die. Right. Yeah. Die. What you mean that? So God had to tell him, 
did not die for you? You was a hot mess. Did not die for you? Come on, come on. But God, you don't see. Did not die for you? God did do it. Did not die for you? Come on, man. Come on, right? Huh? Didn't I die for you? Come on, amen. Oh, my. Oh, bless his name. Mm. So she just had to say, okay, God. <laughs> wow. I'll die. I'll die. I know it's going to be a process. Mm. I know it's going to be a process, but I'll die. All right. Destroy the flesh. Mm. Destroy the flesh so that you can be glorified. Oh, in 1 Corinthians, I know I'm going to go a little long today. Would y'all give me a little time to get this out? 1 Corinthians 9 and 27 puts it this way. It said, but I keep under my body and bring it unto subjection, lest that I may by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself shall be a castaway. Right. Bring it on the suggestion. So, so whatever we, whatever comes out of our mouths, we don't, we don't walk through it. We don't gave it to God, so we don't be a castaway. So, no, nobody look at us like we're crazy. We can tell, hey, I've been there, done that, got the T-shirt. Hallelujah. So your words can mean something. Bring flesh upon the subjection. Well, the good news is, the young lady handled the situation just as God had told her. Wow. God was pleased, but the enemy was mad as hell. Uh -oh. Ooh, he was mad. Uh -oh. Come on now. Ooh, he was mad as hell. All right. He Come was on. mad. Come he was on. mad. He was mad. He said, okay, you got, you got that one? You got that one? How many of you know that the enemy... Is the accuser of the brother. Yes, he is yes. the accuser of the brother. Yes. He will use every tactic, mm -hmm. every strategy he can mm -hmm. to accuse God's people. Mm -hmm. Especially when he's <laughs> especially when he's intimidated. Mm -hmm. Especially when he knows that this brother and this sister is getting ready to shift. He's going to try to bring you back down. Mm -hmm. So he's the accuser of the brother. Yeah. But Isaiah puts it this way for the accuser of the brother. But we have to move forward and prosper. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 54, 17 puts it this way. He said, no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that rise up against thee in judgment shall be condemned. Shall be condemned. This, y'all missed this part. Mm -hmm. This is the heritage. Right. Come on. This, this is your promise. This is what I'm leaving to you. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. Yeah. And their righteousness is of me, mm -hmm. saith the Lord. Yeah. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. That's our heritage. Mm -hmm. yeah. right. we, we, we need to stop losing our heritage and stop right. giving it away because we're hungry. You're hungry for something other than what God has promised you. Yeah. Right. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, Joseph. Come on, Joseph. Come on. Don't give away your inheritance for a bowl of pottage. Don't give it away. It ain't worth it. It ain't worth it. It ain't worth it. Ain't worth it. This life here is only for a season. Don't work for what you got on this earth, on this life right now, at this moment, at this present time. Uh -huh. As people of the Most High God, we cannot work for what's on this earth because things on this earth is temporal. Yeah, yeah. It's going to pass away. We need to be striving for heavenly things. Right. We need to reach up as high as we can. Mm -hmm. You need to see the light at the end of the tunnel and continue to reach for it. Right. As long as you got your head up and, and reaching for kingdom things and reaching for those things of God, this down here, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We need to oh. soar like the eagles and stop scratching on the ground like chickens. Oh. Soar like eagles.
eagles. And that's what God intended his people to do, is to soar like eagles. But we so busy scratching and scraping for the, what the enemy has to give us on this earth, that which does not matter. Mm -hmm. yeah. It doesn't matter. It doesn't, doesn't matter. matter. Right. Only thing that matters is what we can reach for in the kingdom. Mm -hmm. right. now, don't get me wrong. Things on the earth is good. Things on the earth is good. Mm -hmm. It keeps us comfortable. Mm -hmm. For the time being. Mm -hmm. It's good. I love a woman for house. Mm -hmm. I love I drive a nice car. Mm -hmm. I love I was able to go to school and get two, three, four degrees. I, I love it. Ain't nothing wrong with it. Right. Nothing wrong with it. Right. I love that I'm, I'm able to go and buy what I want to buy, when I want to buy, how I want to buy. Uh -huh. Right. But then God had to reveal something to me about that. Mm. Love shoes. Y'all know I love shoes. Mm -hmm. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> love shoes. Ain't but nothing for me to go. I, I don't, they always don't sell. <laughs> let, me, let me put that in play like that. The pastor did a pastor shut me down. <laughs> I go to dealers when it's on sale, amen. <laughs> and, and I go when they got that, you know, 50% off, and then I get an extra 40% off, so therefore I get about a hundred and something dollars shoes for $19. All right, See, I'm, I'm a good student. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I'm a good steward. I'm a good steward. Even though I may buy two, three pairs, but I'm still a good steward. But God had to show me and reveal something to me about that. You go out doing all this shopping and buying shoes because you're missing something in your life. Uh -huh. Ouch. Yes, it was ouch. Ouch. I was missing something. Oh my. I ain't gonna stop buying shoes. But, but I'm gonna feel that void that I was missing. So when I do go buy two, three shoes, I can enjoy it. Come on, women. Y'all know about retail therapy. Y'all know about retail therapy. Ain't the only one. Because the situation in my life wasn't quite right. Things was going on that wasn't quite right. So I'm going to do some retail therapy. Praise Jesus. Holler than that, forget I got the stuff in my closet. Come on, Amen. Some of y'all just don't want to admit. Some of y'all just don't want to get admit it. Let me tell you, the truth gonna set you free. The truth will set you free on today. Go ahead and admit it. There's some things missing in your life that you're trying to fill that void with something else. That's what you need to admit. There's a void that you're trying to fill. Praise Jesus. And I thank God for revealing that thing to me. That I needed to feel that boy. And that the enemy was mad. Upset. Mad as hell, mad as hell. Uh -huh. I, I meant that. Mm. He was mad as hell. Right. Yeah. Ooh, he was mad. Yeah, that's right. Yes. <laughs> yes he couldn't get you. He couldn't get me with the first shift. He couldn't get me with the second shift. He couldn't get me with the third shift. Huh? Okay, here comes the fourth shift. I'm going to attack your health. Mm. I'm going to attack your health. Jesus. Not only that, I'm not only am I going to attack your health, I'm going to get your husband. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get everybody I know. Uh -huh. I'm going to get it. Mm. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. But little did the enemy know. See, that's something about the enemy. The enemy thinks he knows everything, but he doesn't. Y'all ever met somebody that knows everything about everything but don't know oh, nothing geez. about nothing? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> they know everything concerning what's con concerning your life. Mm -hmm. Everything. Hallelujah. I don't care if you start talking about the earthworm. Amen. <laughs> he knows. Amen. They knows about the earthworm. Mm -hmm. They studied the earthworm. Mm -hmm. They know how the earthworm digs down and come up. They know everything about it. I don't care what you bring up. They know about it. They know it. Be careful. Come on now. Be careful. Yeah. Be careful. Yeah. 
Yeah. About those folks you. that know everything about everything, but they can't do can't do nothing for us. Come on, come on now. Come on. Come on. Wait. Wait. Ha, bless his name. Bless his name. Bless his name. Hallelujah. He was mad, so he decided, but he didn't know that God had already told me about this thing that was going to happen. This message didn't just come and talking about the heart. God had told me about the heart thing six months ago, even before. Y'all know I just went through this, this little scare. It scared me because heart disease run in my family. Mm. And the enemy knows that heart disease run in my family. Mm. And I've been running away from this thing for quite a while, making sure that I don't have this heart disease yeah. that, that all of my sisters with stits and, and taking heart pills and all this other kind of stuff, all these other ailments that, you know, mother had heart disease and all, I've been running from it. So it kind of scared me, but God had already prepared me for what was going to happen six months ago. And then when I went through the thing, I said, God, you know you saw me. Because you prepared me for this. And I wasn't too worried about it. Because I knew that God had already prepared me for it, and everything was going to be all right. So it's something when you know, right. that you know deep down in your soul that God had already told you about a thing, mm -hmm. hallelujah, that it was going to be all right. Everything that the enemy tries to come up against you with, God turns that thing around, mm -hmm. and it's going to be for your good. But the thing is, like I said earlier, we want to give up too early. Because it seems like it's so hard. Not only did that, that he tried to attack me with my heart, I used to have migraines years ago. Years ago, I used to have migraines. And I said, God, I can't praise you like this. I can't worship you like this. Long time ago, over 20 years ago. And this evangelist came to town, and I came up, and he prayed for me. He prayed for migraines. And I hadn't had a migraine in over 20 years. Jesus. I mean the, the, the type of migraines that put you to, in the bed. The type of migraines that you can't even whisper. The type of migraines, don't turn no light on, don't walk, don't move, don't even breathe migraines. And the enemy tried to bring that back. You know, last Sunday, my head, I had a migraine so bad, I'm like, Lord Jesus, I walked around. I thought I was uh, uh, Beyonce or somebody walking around with some shades on. That's just how bad my head was hurting. But we have to stay in the game regardless. Regardless of what's going on around us. Regardless, the enemy is going to use every tactic, every discouragement, every disillusion, every disappointment, every ailment he can to throw us off our games. But God, right. That's right. we have to hold on. That's the old folks said. We have to hold on to God's unchanging hand. God, if he promised you, it shall come to pass. It shall come to pass. But through it all, through it all, I've learned how to trust him. I've learned how to depend upon him and his holy word. So we, can't, we can't allow the tactics of the enemy to throw us off off our games. Mm -hmm. Whatever is near and dear to your heart, he's going to use it against us. Yeah. He's going to use it. And he's going to make you think that, oh Jesus. He's going to make you think that you're fighting a losing battle. Mm -hmm. He's going to make you think that. He wanted me to think that my health was a losing battle. Mm -hmm. But Isaiah told me, that he was wounded for my transgression. Yes. He was bruised for my iniquity. And the chastisement of my, you got to make this thing personal. Right. Yeah. Right. I know the scripture says our, but I make, you have to make it personal, people of God. The chastisement of my peace was upon him. And with his stripes, I was healed. I'm here to tell you guys that, that God will keep your heart. Mm -hmm. He will keep it. Mm -hmm. He will not allow the devices 
and the tactics of the enemy to take you out. Because God knows. I guess y'all knew about this time that the young lady was me. Because God knows during this, this year was rough. It was rough. It was rough for a sister. Praise Jesus. It was rough for a sister. I went to bed. Went to bed because things was just, just rough. But just rough for just rough for a sister. And don't you know every issue, the Bible tells us to guard your heart with all diligence. Because out of it flows the issues of life. And when we in situations that comes up against our in our lives, we forget to guard our hearts. Out of it flows the issues of life. So whatever we allow to be dumped and poured into our hearts, it flows out. And not only pollute and contaminate this natural body, but it pollutes and contaminates everything around us. It was rough. And everything that was flowing in me was contaminating my house. Mm -hmm. So whatever you allow to, to be poured into you, any toxic or nasty, dead thing, mm -hmm. you allow it to be poured in you, you're pouring it out. In your ministry, on your job, in your family, in your children, think about it. So we have to guard our hearts. I'm not saying set a bulldog up there and don't let nobody in. Mm -hmm. But we have to be careful what we allow in. We have to be careful. Because if you allow certain things in your heart, it's going to throw you off your game. Mm -hmm. And you'll never reach your fullest potential, that which God has promised you. So guard your hearts with all diligence. Stay in the game regardless of what the situation may look like. God knows this sister right here wanted to give up. Shut up, poor young Amen. God knows. Oh, look, God. <laughs> this is not supposed to be this hard. Here, you can have this. I'm doing the time. You can have this. Mm -hmm. uh -uh. No. I, I, I'm, just, I'm just not going to do it. Went to bed. Close the door. Don't go. Nope. Not going to do it. But come on. Had to remind me. Praise Jesus. Had to remind I know I'm going over time, but I asked for a little time. Praise Jesus. Amen. Because I'm trying to be the best person I can be. Amen. And I desire for each and every one of you to be the best person that you can be. Amen. Amen. So don't let your situation and your circumstances around you contaminate your heart. Don't let people pour dead things into your life that's going to throw you off your game. Because if, if they can throw you off your game, y'all know what? I say it's our time. If the enemy can throw pastor and myself off our game, we'll be setting up in his church by ourselves. We'll be setting right up here by ourselves. It'll be just me and pastor throwing off our game. Because he's going to wipe everybody out and everything that's close to us. Because we're off our game. Oh, praise Jesus. Somebody only God a hand clap for Don't y'all yeah. let. Don't y'all let. That applies to us, too. Because we are children of the Most High God. And he will discipline us. Yeah. Keep on trying to get out the way. Because we're constantly trying to get out the way. We're constantly trying to duck and dodge what God has called us to do. Hallelujah. We're constantly bobbing and weaving. Uh -oh. You're on the goal line. You're about to receive your blessing. You 
first and goal. But you're yet ducking and you're yet dodging. And you won't push toward the goal in your life. Yeah. The Bible tells us to press toward the mark. I didn't see nowhere in there where it says, back it up. Back that thing up, back it up. <laughs> Y'all know how it goes out in the world, praise you. <laughs> Y'all yeah, ain't been saved all your life. I ain't, praise God. I thank God for my experience, my wilderness experience. I thank God for my wilderness experience. I, I can say that. Hallelujah. Don't be ashamed of your wilderness experience, backing that thing up and whatnot. Huh? <laughs> My heart wasn't in the game back then. My heart wasn't in, it was in a game, but it wasn't that game. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. But it wasn't the right game. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. I thought I was winning, but I was losing. Amen. Sometimes we can be in certain games and we think we're winning. But as we sit down and we look back over our life, we see how much time we have lost. We wasted so much time. Just think how far we could be if we would just get in the way of God. If we would just keep our hearts in the game. If we keep our hearts in the game, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. God got you. I'm here to tell you. I'm a living witness. I'm a testimony. God got you. Amen. It hurts. Oh, it hurts. It hurts bad. It hurts like somebody to pull your heart out and just tremble. It hurts. But God got you. He got you. He got you. If it was not for God who was on my side. If it was not for God who's on my side. I don't know where I would be. I don't know where I would be. I'd be somewhere in a lunatic bin, taking some Xanax or, or getting electroshock therapy or, or something. Mm -hmm. But God, but God, he would keep us. Not only would he keep our mind, our hearts, he would keep our minds in perfect peace. Mm -hmm. But those whose minds is stayed upon him, we got to keep our heart and our minds girded up. We got to. Because the enemy, he's coming. The Bible tells us that he's going to and fro, seeking whom he may devour. But let me tell you something right now on this day. He stopped by the wrong house. He stopped by the wrong house. He's not going to. And I'm tired of looking around and watching. Satan going to and fro and seeking whom he may devour in this house. Mm -hmm. Amen. No more. No more. Mm -hmm. Right. No more. Mm -hmm. I'm an intercessor, and I, I've been off my game. I've been off my game because of the situation. Mm -hmm. But I know for going on. It's 14 minutes, y'all. Thank you. God, thank you. <laughs> I'm being free today. I don't care what y'all say. Y'all ready to go? I'm being free. Amen. I'm being free today. Because you've got to get to a point in your life. You've got to get a point in your ministry mm -hmm. that you're sick and tired of being sick and tired of being shoved aside. Mm -hmm. You've got to get a point, get to a point in your natural life that you're sick and tired of sick and tired of making the same dumb mistakes over and over again. You've got to get sick and tired of that. And you've got to understand that God has something better for us. Yes. What we got right now, this is nothing compared to what God has for us. Yes. But we want to settle. I always tell my kids, don't settle. Don't settle. Don't settle for less. Just don't, just don't settle. We are not people of God that we should settle. Mm -hmm. If our Heavenly Father desires the best for us, we should have it. Yes. Amen. But it requires something of us. Mm -hmm. It requires discipline. It requires obedience. Mm -hmm. It requires prayer. It requires fasting. Mm -hmm. they, ain't, they ain't curse words. Those are not new curse words, y'all. Mm -hmm. There's not new curse words. 
prayer, fasting, it's not ineffective. It's going to require us to do that. Because we want to see the kingdom of God. If CRCF don't grow no further than this, as long as we focus on the kingdom of God, yes. that's Amen. our purpose. Yes. But see, some of us want CRCF to grow for other reasons, but I want it to grow all for the glory of God. And when we all get that same mentality that we desire for this place to yes. grow for nothing more than the kingdom of God, yes. then and only then will we see. If you want a change in your life, when you don't want things to happen in your life just for the moment, just so you can feel good for right now, but you want a permanent change in your life, yeah. you want God to do a miraculous things in your life, because the right now pleasure, mm -hmm. it ain't good enough. Mm -hmm. It's not good enough, because that feeling is going to subside. Mm -hmm. It's going to subside. And sometimes it's only 10, 15 minutes that you're feeling good. But if we focus our attention on God, mm -hmm. if we do that and keep our hearts focused on God, if we keep our minds focused on God, mm -hmm. do y'all know what we could do? Mm -hmm. can do yeah. We can do miraculous things. Yeah. When we come in here on Sunday morning, I'm getting ready to sit down so I can start. Y'all think I'm starting to fuss now, but I'm trying to set somebody free. Maybe it's just me, praise Jesus. And if, I don't want, if I'm the only one that sets free, God is worth it. Amen. Come on. Amen. Because if I'm free, you're going to be free. Amen. It's worth it. It's worth it. Glory to God. Glory to God. So if you look at the spiritual ramifications behind this testimony. Right. right. If you look at the spiritual deliverance right. mm -hmm. behind this message, it's a right. testimony. I'm just going to call it what it is. Because mm -hmm. God knows I sure didn't want to do it. Mm -hmm. I sure didn't. But God told me this morning at 6 o'clock, you're going to be free, and on top of that, somebody else is going to be free. Amen. 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 Because some people's hearts is not in the game. Yeah. Yeah. You look like it. Yeah. You say it. Yeah. You do everything. Right. Perfect actor, <laughs> praise Jesus. But your heart is not in the game. Your heart is not in the game. And God needs our hearts to be in the game, y'all. This is not a stage for performance. This is not a school of performance arts. But we need your hearts. God needs your hearts to be in the game. Yes, that's right. Stop going through the motions. Mm -hmm. It's, 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 it's Sunday. Oh, they about to do it with praise and worship, so I'm going to go on church. Get your heart in the game. Oh, it's Wednesday night. They ain't doing nothing but teaching on the New Testament. I know all about it. Mm -hmm. I know all about it. But you ain't living it. That's hard right there. That's real right there. I don't care if you do know about it. The devil knows the word. Mm -hmm. He ain't living it. Am I all right, Pastor? You all right? Yeah. Okay, praise Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to keep our hearts in the game, the children of the most high God. Because yeah. God is going to take us somewhere. Yes. Yeah. Don't be sidelined by the devil. Mm -hmm. So you're just on the edge of, we're just on the edge of our breakthrough. Mm -hmm. And the minute we get on the edge of, of deliverance, when we get on the edge of our breakthrough, when we, 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 we lose heart, yeah. we faint. Mm -hmm. And God tells us, don't faint not. Mm -hmm. Because in due season, mm -hmm. we're going to reap. Don't let somebody else reap your blessing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I want my stuff. Mm -hmm. I want all of it. Every bit. 
and I'm going to go take back from the enemy something that belongs to somebody else. You know you don't have no business with it. <laughs> because we know that you are no child of God. Take it from him and give it to somebody else that deserves it. The enemy taking stuff from us, and he know he don't have no business with it. Let me take that. Yeah, he taking some people's stuff, but some people just just yeah. giving it to him. Right. <laughs> they just giving it to him. It's too hard. Mm. <laughs> it ain't hard, y'all. We make y'all know why it's hard because we make it hard. Mm. I made this message hard because I didn't want to do it. Mm. Because I didn't want to. Sometimes we got to lay our stuff out before. Folk so they can be delivered themselves. Right, right, right. But the problem is, a lot of us is too prideful. Mm. I'm good. Mm -hmm. No, you ain't. Mm -hmm. right. It's freedom in our testimony, children. It's freedom. It's deliverance. And parents, our children learn from us. So whichever way you act outside of these four walls, when these children come in, these four walls, they tell them. Yes. I just want to let y'all know. Yes. <laughs> they may not say it with their mouths, but they say it with their actions. Mm -hmm. They say it. They say it. So whichever way. So be careful. The mom, you better not tell my business. Hmm. You ain't. That's why most of, most of us are jacked up right now because it's our business and we, and we don't want to be set free. Mm -hmm. So we're going to stay in the game. Amen? Amen. Amen. We're going to keep our hearts in the game. Amen? Amen. We're gonna, this is not a school of performance arts, All right. but it's a school of God, a school of the kingdom so that we can be built up. Mm -hmm. And do according to what God has called us to do. That's what we're going to do. Amen. And we're going to stay in the game. Amen. And we're not going to allow the enemy to sidetrack. Hey, I'm ready now. Because I know the enemy ain't done. Right. For the mere fact that I'm standing here before you today. And I'm sharing. And I'm being set free from this one thing. The minute I, hey, I'm ready for him. Because he ain't done. Just because things look like it's going good now, live to see another day. Open your eyes. The enemy is still going to and fro, waiting for you to be off your game. He's waiting. He's waiting. He's waiting. But you have to be ready for him. And you have to keep your heart in the game. Amen. 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 Give God a hand clap of praise. Anyone needs prayer. If anyone's heart is weary, you don't have to be say you're going through anything, but you are. You may not want to admit it. You may be dealing with certain things. You may not want to admit it. But this is the place of safety. This is the ark of safety where we can all come together and we can pray ye for another. Yeah. And we don't have to go out in the world seeking things to fulfill a void in our lives. And we don't have to sit here and act like God had never done anything for us. I thank God I was able to open my eyes this morning. Miracle number one. Amen. Miracle number two, I was able to lift my hands. And miracle number three, I was able to get out of the bed. I've had miracles all morning. Amen. All morning. Because some people wasn't able, but didn't wake up this morning. And you know if they didn't wake up, they sure didn't <laughs> raise their arms or get out of bed. Miracles all morning. So if you have issues of the heart right now, If you have issues of the heart and if you need God to create in you a clean heart. Yeah. And the second